this is the 46 of 46 podcast summit sessions where we'll talk all things adirondack backcountry and beyond from high peak stories and adventures to trail tips and tricks we'll dive deep into the heart of these mountains and the people who passionately climb them adirondack maps and spruce traps bushwhacks and backpacks it's all here on the 46 of 46 summit sessions Hello world, welcome back to the Summit Sessions here on the 46 of 46 podcast. I hope you all were able to get outside this past week and enjoy the beautiful weather that we've had. At least it was beautiful here in the Adirondacks anyways. I personally enjoyed a nice trip up Allen Mountain on a sunny day this time and it was glorious. Summer's not over yet, so it's important to squeeze out every little ounce that we do have left. On this week's Summit Session, I'm bringing back some former 46 of 46 podcast guests to discuss the most recent fastest known time attempt that they were gunning for here in the High Peaks. I'll be speaking once again to Bethany Garrison and Katie Rhodes to get the whole story of Bethany's recent supported FKT attempt of the 46 High Peaks here in the Adirondacks. You may remember that Bethany and Katie set the unsupported thru-hike FKT last year, And you can hear all about it on episode 73 of this podcast. And this year, Bethany was going for the supported record with the help of Katie running the show and her support crew behind the scenes. The FKT attempt officially began on August 2nd at 9 a.m. And Bethany pushed like a champ for three straight days, but ultimately had to throw in the towel at the base of Allen Mountain on August 5th at 8 a.m. But she did complete 38 of 46 high peaks in three days, which is just mind-blowing all on its own. But they're both here on the line tonight to tell us the whole story of the Superhero 46. So Bethany and Katie, welcome back to the 46 of 46 podcast, and thanks for coming on the show once again. Thanks, James. Happy to be here. Stoked to have you both. Katie, how are you tonight? Awesome. Yeah, doing good over here. Great, great. It's always fun to follow along to see what both of you are up to, you know, out in the mountains. And you're both always tackling just monster hikes in general. (laughs) But not only are you, you're not just hiking them, you're you're running them, which absolutely badass. Props to both of you on the fact that you're not just tackling these things, you're running them. Uh, It's absolutely incredible what you guys are doing out in the mountains. Thanks. It's pretty badass. It is. I mean, it is, you know, I mean, like these, these, these. These days are hard enough to just walk, but uh, to be running them. Whew. Yeah, and the, the Adirondack train is, oh, the I think very non-runnable. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't lend itself well to running all of the routes and the rocks and whatnot. But uh, Bethany, you're just under two weeks removed from the FKT attempt. How's your body recovered? You know, have you been back in the woods yet? Um, wh- how are you feeling? Yeah, I have. Um, I just hiked Phelps yesterday with my little dog, Tahas, and we had a lovely time. And I'll tell you, 10 miles never felt shorter in my life, to be perfectly honest. Sure. <laughs> um, but the body is feeling really good. And um, yeah, um, happy to be back out there. I spent a lot of time, spent about just 10 days of rest and recovery with my family and doing walks and stayed in sandals and did a lot of pool time. Oh, very good. Now, what made you choose Phelps out of curiosity? What was that reasoning? Oh, it's a dog friendly hike from South Meadows. So I really like coming in South Meadows. And to be perfectly honest, I was starting to scout for my Paul Smith and Clarkson classes that I teach. <laughs> okay, very cool. And uh, Katie, I know you just hit the Sewards and Santanonis in one single enormous day. So it also mm-hmm. didn't take you very long to get back out into the woods, I see. How did that day go? Yeah, it was awesome. It was a beautiful day. I've been wanting to do that for a really long time. Um, I finished my first round of the 46 a couple of years ago, and I finished on Seymour. And I remember we were approaching the base of Seymour, and one of my friends I was with, you know, pointed down the trail and said, 
you know, isn't it crazy? Some people, you know, they come from there, they used to do the Santa range and, and then they do the Seward range in the same day. And I was like, wow, that's wild. I can't even imagine being that strong, but one day, one day I'm going to get there. And, uh, you know, this past year, I kind of got to the point where I was strong enough and I've been having it in the back of my mind. And, um, Jason and Jay, the two of the other pacers from the superhero 46, we had been talking about doing that together. Just, we bonded so much during the event, you know, just getting out and, and doing that big day. And so we just went for it and we had an absolute blast. Very cool. That's a, uh, that's a feel good story right there. A very yeah. feel good story. <laughs> very cool. Yeah. So now you mentioned, uh, you mentioned the superhero 46. So I know you guys on social media were hashtagging that and that's what you were calling this attempt. Uh, so where'd the name come from and what's the the story behind that? <laughs> Well, after the through hike, Katie and I became besties and we started many hiking adventures together. And one of them was we wanted to try to do all 46 in the winter in two weeks. And we ended up doing a single season of the 46 winter. And it was on one of those long hikes where you have run out of just about everything to talk about and then the question of like what would your superhero be (laughs) (laughs) nice (laughs) yeah comes in and um but really we were talking about it in a deeper way too of how everyone has a superhero in them and a power they haven't discovered yet and how she and i had helped each other discover like a deeper power from the through hike. And we started playing on that. And I think at that time too, we were also doing just a lot of talks about the through hike with different hiker groups. And we were doing like a lot of zoom presentations and we started playing on this idea that I was pink lightning and she was lady logic. All right. Sounds like a comic book in the making here. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta pay someone to do that. <laughs> yeah, cartoon version of me. I want it. Like I want it so bad. <laughs> now, I've never met either of you in person, but from our conversation last time, I'm guessing Lady Logic for Katie comes because you're. Y- you said yourself, you you think about everything very very uh very logically. I assume that's where this name has come from and which would make you a perfect candidate to be, you know, running the this the behind the scenes of such a supported attempt. I'm guessing that's where this name came from for you. Yeah, yeah, it kind of lined up pretty well. Um, I'm definitely the logistics person. And, uh, you know, Bethany and I joke a lot about, you know, she's the lightning and I'm the logic and you can't really make an attempt like like any of the attempts we do happen without both components and and that's really where um that concept of playing off each other and supporting each other and making each other better comes from you know um you you need that lightning you need that spark you know bethany's usually the one that comes up with kind of the crazy idea and convinces me that yes we are strong enough and yes we can Mm -hmm. do it um and then i take that idea and i go okay so Wait, you know, where are our resupplies? Where are our water pumps? <laughs> you know, who needs to be where? How are we going to get this done? What gear do we need? And um, you really need both components to make it happen. So, yeah, I'm I'm Lady Logic. I'm the logistics piece of it. And, um, and the lightning's just as important, you know? If you're not brave enough to try in the first place, if you're not excited enough to uh, think of that crazy idea in the first place, then, you know, it's never going to happen for you. Well, absolutely. I mean, you need you need the two of them, you know, logic keeps you from getting you know flying too close to the sun but the uh the pink lightning gets you gets you off your feet and gets you moving so it's a it's a good team uh team dynamic you have going on there and uh obviously it shows um so let's talk about this F- fkt attempt so what did you guys do to prepare for it now i mean you're always out there doing huge mile days you know just for fun um you know you're going after other fkts which I'm assuming typically is just you're just out there to do it and you happen to get those FKTs off. And um, so did you train specifically for this or did you just kind of come up with a route? You're in good shape and decide to go for it. How did that how'd that go about? Yeah, so how that looked last August, I was watching Alyssa and Sarah 
as they went after the 46 and it was just such a cool race and I was following both of their GPS trackers and between the two of them I started to see a route come together that was similar to the through hike so once Katie and I got the through hike in my mind I was just thinking well supported (laughs) is um kind of like the through hike but you have support so I know physically we can do this and now logistically we just have to figure it out when it came to training we did the winter single season that was part of the strategy and Katie knows that I hate snowshoes so mentally (laughs) that was like um that was good mental training for me and you know, even on the supported 46, she wrote a note and put it in my shoe. At least these aren't snowshoes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that brought like laughter to me after, you know, like 48 hours on trail. Yeah, I, um, I could imagine. Yeah. So um, and then starting this spring, I just started I tried to do like an FKT just about every week um, trying to scout out my pace, trying to scout out, um, elevation in a day and how my body would rebound and then go after some that I really didn't find appealing, but I knew mentally would help me. And, you know, it was tough. Like I don't, I don't think I know how to train as well for supported as I do unsupported, you know, unsupported is my background. That's my camping experience. That's my mountaineering experience supported is it's different it's faster and come June I felt a little burnt out on it to be perfectly honest and even questioned if like I would be in a good headspace like going into August okay but uh looks like you got past that uh so what so what what made you get past that if you weren't you you know you were kind of doubting it clearly something got you over that hump yeah, I think, you know, you, you kind of have to go low to go high again. So the low happened in Vermont and Katie and I were attempting an FKT and I ended up um, bailing on it and she finished and um, we had a good debrief like after that. And it just, you know, sometimes mentally you do burn out on how it feels uphill and how it feels downhill, but I think what I was fearing more in June was that I was going to experience something in August that I had never experienced before and I didn't know how it was going to feel and I didn't want to let my team down. So I, it was fear. Um, so you just have to look at fear and it's not as easy as I'm explaining it right now, but it's, I got a book to be perfectly honest. Great. <laughs> and I, yeah. Um, there's this amazing ultra runner, uh, Hillary Allen, and she took a very traumatic fall on a race and she wrote a book out and back. So just by reading her story, it, it really helped me see that there's no failure in trying. Very cool. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a life lesson right there for sure. So, Katie, I um, what did what did you do to kind of prepare behind the scenes in terms of you know prepping and planning for you know the support crew role that you were doing? Which you know, going from yours and Bethany's history, you're always right there side by side. So you're taking on a different role for this. So, what was your preparation like? Yeah, it was definitely very different, especially because. Um, I've never crewed. I've never been a coordinator. I've never paced. This was all completely new to me. Um, so I was really intimidated, (laughs) but of course, you know, I had, uh, I had pink lightning there to say, you got this, you can do this We're a team. We're going to figure it out. Um, or we're not, and we're going to learn lessons and we'll figure it out next time, you know? So you, you just have to kind of start doing. Um, so I, Naturally, as Lady Logic, spent a lot of time with a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I put together, you know, an auto calculating spreadsheet to figure out, you know, what does the pacing look like? Um, what time are we going to expect her in different locations? Um, how many different pacers are we going to need? When are we going to have to deploy them? And just like really pouring over 
the numbers and, and the written logistics and things like that. Um, and then the other half of it was, you know, I was also a pacer part of the time. And um, during the unsupported, I was definitely the weak link. And I don't 